So this is where I store the bees in the fridge in a sealed container with uh, a hygrometer so I can see the exact uh, humidity level within the box and the temperature level. I had opened this box several times so it was a little lower than desired but the, uh, in a couple of days I have the opportunity to change the air to a higher humidity. So this video explains how to control the humidity uh, to the right levels. So the moisture for the bees when you store them in the refrigerator is very important. It cannot be 100% humidity, otherwise the bees will simply become uh, fungus and the fungus will take over and mold. And it can't be too dry because the bees are still, their metabolism is still occurring and they still need oxygen and it can't be 100% dry air, otherwise it will suck the moisture out of them. So you need very specific range of moisture in the chamber where the bees are stored. And of course they are perfectly sealed so that the refrigerator cannot draw any air or moisture out of the canister where they are stored. So it's very important to have a very specific uh, air uh, moisture in that canister. We can use what is called a psychrometric chart to figure out what air we need in order to for the bees to survive over the winter. They're a fairly complicated charts so we won't go over everything that is shown on these charts. But you can see the relative humidity or the moisture percent that you usually get in your weather forecast is shown in this red line and you can see the lines here these red lines so you have 80 percent humidity 60 percent 40 percent etc and this is a hundred percent so it can't get any higher than a hundred percent so that's why this chart ends right here so this is one number the other number we may be interested in is a dew point because that's usually included in a weather forecast and then the regular dry bulb temperature or the temperature that is outside is usually this blue line. So if you see these blue lines coming up from the bottom, so if it's 55 degrees outside, then 55 you would follow this blue line. So if you capture air from the outside when it's 55 degrees and 20 percent relative humidity, by the time you put it in your fridge, which is around 44 degrees, you travel horizontally across this line to see what the relative humidity will be at that temperature. And for convenience sake, let's just say as we draw the horizontal line from here to here, we're basically at 40 and 40% 40 humidity. So even though the cooling of the air increased the relative humidity, it's still not enough for the bees. The bees need to be definitely above 50% humidity and 75% humidity would be ideal. If you say 75% humidity plus or minus 10% uh, put you into the range of uh, 65 to 85%. We can look at a more detailed chart. It's the same chart again. It just has more uh, graduations. And if we go from this percentage saturation at the top here and we see our 50 percent line, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 percent, we want to be near the 70 percent line down here. So if we have our 50 percent line here, and our 70% line here and if we're in the refrigerator at 44 degrees Fahrenheit which is equivalent to about 6.67 uh, degrees Celsius you can see in the fridge we're around where this red line is and we want to be in a window where our relative humidity is between 70 which is this line 
and then this is the 80 line, and then this is about 85. So this rectangle essentially shows the region we want to be uh, for the humidity of the air for the bees. The hotter you go when you capture this air, the less humid it should be, so it doesn't get overly humid by the time it gets down to 44 degrees, because if it gets too humid, if it gets over 100% humidity, then all that water is just going to drop out of the air and, and rest on the bees, and the bees will be wet, and they'll just go moldy. There's a very finite window of temperature to capture. So if, if you go down here, you can see some general rules. If you're capturing air at 5 degrees C, which is this 41 degree F line here, the range you want to be in, in terms of relative humidity, is about 78 to 95 percent. You can see the lines. Here's 90, so it's about 95, and then um, you know 70, much closer to 80. So in this range here. So if you go outside at 41 degrees F or 5 degrees Celsius, you want to be in this relative humidity. If the air is not in this range, then the air will not be appropriate for the bees. They'll be too wet or too dry. You can do a similar exercise with different temperatures. So if you're at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you want air between 55 and 65 relative humidity. So if we look at the calendar and what we have in terms of our air humidity, you can see the dew point. We talked, we didn't talk about the dew point, but we'll, we'll use it in the next example. But here we're looking at relative humidity, which is this green line coming across here. And we're also looking at the actual temperature, which is the red line, actual temperature here. So if we look at the red line and we can see the temperature fluctuate, and if we look at the humidity and we can see the humidity fluctuate, we want to find a point at which these are true. So for example, if we're looking for a 44 degree F temperature, we need to be between 70 and 85. So if we look at 1 p.m. on Sunday, we have about 43 degrees F. And if we look at our humidity, it's about 86% humid. So this would be a good time to pull the air because it falls within the range. Now you can see it's also a peak on the uh, precip on the rain so that otherwise it would be way too dry. It's not until we get some rain that we get enough humidity that it could be acceptable for the bees. Now you could go through, find those points. Another easier way to know that the air is appropriate is to look at the dew point directly. When we look back at our top chart, we, we can see that the dew point is just red on this left hand scale uh, directly across straight line. So these green lines are shown here, what these dew points are, for example. And again, similarly here, we can just, re since we know our window is right here, we can see that if the dew point is, so this is the scale, 0, 5, 10, 15, etc. And it's these slanted lines, so this is the 0 slanted line, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And as dew point is read directly across, we can see that if our dew point is between, let's say, we could say 1 degree, or to be safe, maybe 2 degrees, and four degrees. So anything where we have a dew point between two and four is a pretty safe time to pull the air. Two and four degrees C translates to 35.6 degrees F and 39.2 degrees F. So you could have a general rule that says between 36 and 39 Fahrenheit dew point is when you can pull the air. Because when you look at this chart and you see the dew point which is the dark green being traced here. 
and you can see here there's a 32 degree blue line that goes across the entire chart and you can see the periods at which your dew point might be between 36 and 39 right so there's a little band of time up here where it's appropriate to capture some air so you can directly see just by looking at dew points if you're doing the dew point method that there's not a lot of opportunity in these next 10 days to capture the air there's an opportunity here on sunday and then perhaps maybe a borderline opportunity here between thursday and friday but the rest of the days are not appropriate they're just too dry one recommendation is once a month you check the the charts and see when is a good time to refresh the air for the bees and uh, you have one canister that's outside capturing the air and staying with the temperature of the surrounding environment so you don't have a a do you know a cold container and hot air or vice versa you just keep it outside until it's the right time then once it's the right time you bring your bees outside from the fridge because outside is a perfect perfect environment you open the old canister transfer the bees into the new canister that has the fresh air from that environment seal that new canister and then put the canister in the fridge so that's how that's a better method to make sure you have the right humidity uh, for the bees for maximum uh, survival rate rather than using the sponge method or those other methods where you just put some water in and you probably most likely will bring the humidity up to 100 percent or or higher and if the bees are cold and the water is warm the water is going to want to go into the environment and the bees are cold so they will it will condense on the bees and cause them to be moldy this is the best method to make sure you don't have any moldy bees during the entire storage period over the winter.